Good morning. We got a small crowd today, but a wonderful and great one. Um, let's see here. I don't have any announcements to make regarding the service, so let's begin with our opening hymn, number 710. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, it is my privilege to announce God's grace to all of you. Our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord have mercy. Be strong and let your heart take courage. All you the Lord. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my, God. my times are in your hand. Your 
Make your face shine on your servant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise, number 740, I Am Jesus' Little Lamb. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense and every need, continue to preserve your church in safety, govern her by your goodness, and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the scripture readings. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all, the, all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be declared, or will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is, n is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture, and to drink of clear water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet. And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder, and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 1. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. 
Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the God, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We have a small crowd in church today, so I'm hoping that means a lot of people are, are watching online or at least watching the recording. And uh, so we're going to still do our children's message, but you guys will have to be my big kids, okay? And you'll have to answer the question for me. And my question is, have you ever lost something precious to you? Yeah? You've lost something precious to you? Did you find it again? How did you feel when you found it again? If you found it again. You felt pretty good, didn't you? It was pretty happy. Well, I'm going to share a story. But when I was about four or five years old, I had first gotten my first pair of glasses when I was that young, okay, about four or five years old. And a couple of weeks after I'd gotten my first pair of glasses, I woke up this mor one morning, and I could not find them anywhere. And so I went running downstairs, panicked, and said, Mom, Mom, I can't find my glasses anywhere. And so my mom goes, okay, we'll search. And so she and myself and my brother, we searched our home. We lived in, uh, in the university village at the time um, uh, when I was growing up uh, that was housing for, uh, for people that worked at the university. We lived in one of the townhomes there, and so we searched from the basement up to the second floor all over the place looking for my glasses, and we could not find my glasses anywhere. We couldn't find them anywhere. And after a long time, or at least, you know, to a five-year-old, it felt like a long time, a long time of searching my house for my glasses, um, my mom finally looked at me and she goes, Patrick. And I go, what? And she says, your glasses are on your face. <laughs> they were there the whole time. Now, I was embarrassed a little bit because, you know, of that, but I also felt wonderful because I had found the thing that I, was, that I had thought that I had lost. I found the thing that I thought I had lost, and so I felt absolutely wonderful. Our gospel lesson for today uh, tells us that, uh, that that's how God feels about us. <clears throat> before we believed in Jesus, before we believed in Jesus, it was like we were lost. You know, God couldn't bless us. He couldn't do certain things for us. He definitely couldn't give us um, heaven, which is the biggest blessing that God wants to give to all of his children. So we were lost. But then once we believed in Jesus, we were found. God finds us, and he puts his spirit in our hearts, and we believe in him, and because we believe in him, 
we now get to receive all of the blessings that he has given us. And that's how God feels about us when we believe in him. It says in there, there will be great rejoicing in heaven among the angels over one who repents, one who believes in God. God is so happy to have found you and to make you one of his own. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, sometimes in life we get lost, but you are always there to find us. Before we believed in you, we were definitely lost, and yet you came and looked, at, looked for us and found us and gave us your spirit and made us your own. Um, we are so thankful that you have found us. We ask that you help us to rejoice with you uh, when you find more people to be part of your family as well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll continue with our next hymn. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, dear Lord. Amen. Our text for this uh, 17th Sunday after Pentecost is our gospel lesson as it was read earlier. I, I am a big fan of Jesus' parables. We're in the time of the, se uh, of the year, uh, the season of the church year, where we get to explore a lot of Jesus' parables, and, uh, and I like... I love his parables, and I, the more complex the parable, the more I love it. Um, sometimes his parables are easy to understand, uh, and I would have categorized this morning's as one of the more easier to understand, but sometimes parables can get a bit mixed up, and when we mix them up a bit, we end up with the wrong message, not the message, not the message that Jesus intended uh, from the parable. 
And, and our gospel lesson in today's world is one of those. It's kind of gotten mixed up just a little bit uh, with some people and some teachers because there are a lot of, a lot of preachers and teachers out there uh, that, that teach that this passage tells us that we are supposed to go out and find the lost sheep of God's pasture and bring them home again, okay? We're supposed to go out and find those who have stopped coming to church and those who have stopped or even stopped believing in God and, and we're supposed to get them to come back to church and convince them to come back to church. Those who have lost their way, we're supposed to put them back on the right path. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't do that or should do that. I'm not going to say that one way one way or the other, but what I am going to say is that that's not what our gospel lesson for today is telling us. That is not what this parable of the lost sheep is all about. It's not what Jesus is saying or teaching in this parable. So what is he teaching? Well, let's take a closer look at Jesus' parable of the lost sheep. Who of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine and go after the one that is lost? It makes, I think it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? If you lose a sheep, you're going to go looking for the one that you've lost, aren't you? We have the parallel parable that comes right after it of the lost coin, which reinforces the, the, the same main point. You know, if you have a hundred coins and you lose one, are you going to go find it? Well, yeah, of course, you're going to go look for the one that you've lost. But let's stick with sheep because that seems to be the theme of today's readings that have been assigned to us today, especially with the Old Testament. And so it says there's a guy, okay? It says, who of you having 100 sheep, if he loses one of them, there's a guy, and he has a whole bunch of sheep, doesn't he? Okay? He's got 100 of them, as a matter of fact. And he loses one of his sheep, and so he therefore goes and looks for the one that is lost. So the big question in this parable is, who is the guy that Jesus is referring to? Who is the guy who has a whole bunch of sheep? Well, here it's God, isn't it? It's Jesus himself. Okay, that's not too hard to figure out. Who are the 100 sheep then? Well, the 100 sheep in this case would be everybody who believes in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. Those who have faith. Okay, the sheep is us, isn't it? Okay, all right. Who is the lost sheep? Again, I think it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty obvious. The lost sheep would be the person who has stopped going to church, who has wandered away from God, maybe has stopped believing in God, maybe has turned their back on God for some reason or another, but they have they have departed from being part of the flock. They're no longer here. They're no longer part of God's church, part of the flock. For whatever reason, they've left, whether it's just they, they just, you know, stopped coming to church and, and, and wandered away or whether they actively turned away from God one way or the other. So let me ask you this, okay? Does the guy in the parable, does the guy send out other sheep to look for the lost sheep. Did he? No, he didn't, did he? He did not send out other sheep to look for the lost sheep. He went out himself and looked for the lost sheep. Okay? So what Jesus is saying in this parable is this. When a believer gets lost, God himself goes and looks for that lost sheep. He doesn't send somebody else to do it, and he especially does not send other sheep, or in this case, other believers to do it. He doesn't send his friends, he doesn't send his sheep dog to go look for the sheep. No, God himself goes and looks for the lost believer. And I love this part right here, where it says in verse 6, And after he has found it, and when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors so that they can rejoice with him. And then down in verse 10, Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God 
over one sinner who repents. God looks for and finds his lost sheep. His angels, his friends and neighbors, his angels rejoice with him when he finds one and rescues him or her. The reason I'm going through this like this is because this tells us something very important about being a Christian. We should not take upon ourselves responsibilities that God has not given us. God makes it plain that it is not our responsibility to look for and find the lost. It is his. In our Old Testament lesson for today, it says God himself will go and look for them. In our gospel lesson for today, it says the guy goes and looks for the lost sheep. Okay? It is not our responsibility to go and look for the lost sheep and convince them to come back. And yet so many of us try to take that responsibility upon ourselves, don't we? We have to go and find the people who have wandered away and bring them back. It's as if we don't have enough stress and worries in our lives already. We want to add the extreme stress of thinking that if we don't go out and find these lost people and bring them back, then we are bad Christians that we are not doing a good job of believing in Jesus Christ. But that is not the case. The responsibility that God has placed upon our shoulders is to baptize and to teach. It is to share the good news of salvation through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is to share that good news, period. No more, no less. God does the rest. He does the searching. He does the finding. The Holy Spirit gets them to repent, to believe in Jesus, to come back to church. Don't lay that burden upon yourself. Okay? Don't take God's responsibility upon yourself. I think a good example of what I'm trying to say here is the prophet Jeremiah, my favorite Old Testament prophet. By the standards of this world, the prophet Jeremiah was a complete and utter failure. Okay? Nobody listened to them. He did not convince anybody of the truth of his words. Okay? He didn't convince anybody to repent from the wrongdoings that they were doing. And because nobody repented of it, they were carried off into exile. Uh, in Jeremiah's eyes, he was a failure. In the world's eyes, Jeremiah was, a, was a failure. But in God's eyes, Jeremiah was a complete success. Because the only responsibility God gave to Jeremiah was that he share the message. It wasn't Jeremiah's responsibility to convince the people. It wasn't Jeremiah's responsibility to get them to repent. It wasn't Jeremiah's responsibility to get them to turn around. It was simply and solely Jeremiah's responsibility to share the message. And therefore, he was a complete success because he did share the message. That's what God has placed on our shoulders as well, simply to share the message, not convince people of the truth of it, not convince them to turn around and come back to church, though we hope that that's what will happen when we share the message. That's not our responsibility. It's not our responsibility to convince people of the truth. It's simply our responsibility to share that message. The rest of it is up to God. The reason I'm telling you this is this. Don't beat yourself up when someone you know or even love doesn't listen to you. 
Don't take on the extra stress and worry of thinking that, hey, this person will only be saved if I can convince them to believe in Jesus. Okay? If they're convinced by you or how you say it to them. Simply tell them about God's love in Jesus Christ. And then step aside and let God and the Holy Spirit do his work. In a way, to me, that is extremely comforting. Knowing that God's the one who's going to go look for his lost sheep and bring them back home. Because God's much more capable than I am. <laughs> He's much more capable than you are. Look at how much God has forgiven us, including all of those times that we take on more responsibility than what is supposed to be ours. Just as God searched for and found you, so he will do for others. Amen. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Amen. Please rise as we now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing as we bring our offering forward and sing our offertory, Praise and Thanksgiving, number 789. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, at one point in our lives, maybe when we were just babies, maybe as we grew up until older age, we were lost. We were without you. Uh, we were wandering this world aimlessly, without purpose, uh, without, uh, without your love, without your peace. Yet you came and you sought us and you found us and you saved us, and you brought us back to our heavenly home. We pray that you would remind us of that wonderful thing you have done for us, and that in the same way that you have searched out and found us, you will search out and find others as well. Help us to trust you. 
Help us to, to realize that it's not our responsibility to, to save people, to rescue them, to convert them, to bring them back. Uh, that is a responsibility you have placed solely on yourself. You simply ask us to share your message so that they can hear it, and when they hear it, then you and your spirit can get to work. Help us to trust you and to, to leave that in your hands so that it is by your work and your grace and your mercy that the people around us will be saved as well. Dearest Jesus, um, there are many people who, even though they may not be lost, they are suffering and hurting in some way. Uh, we pray for all of those who are sick or injured or hospitalized, that you would bring them healing. We pray for those who mourn the passing of loved ones, especially for Nancy and her family as they mourn the passing of her mother, Laverne, as well as for the royal family and England and all those around the world who mourn the passing of Queen Elizabeth this past week. We pray that you would bring them comfort and peace in the midst of their sorrow. We pray for those who battle against addictions, for those who battle against loneliness and depression and other difficulties in their lives, that you would give them peace as well and a restore to them the joy of your salvation. Dear Holy Spirit, we pray this morning also for all the leaders in this world, for, for our president, for our governor, uh, for, for all elected officials and all leaders throughout the world that, that you have placed there to take care of your people here in this world. We pray that you would grant them wisdom and help them to make decisions that are best for your people, that you would... Uh, uh, forgive them any mistakes and, and sins that they may make in their offices as, as leaders and that you would help them to do the best job that they possibly can so that your people can benefit. For I pray this all in the name of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn.
Good morning once again. Um, uh, on this very rainy Burlington Days Day. So, um, who was it? Ken was mentioning how it seems to always be raining on Burlington's Day, doesn't it? So, unfortunately for us. Um, I do have some uh, announcements to make before we, uh, before we go our way. Um, first of all, let me see here. Joe will be back in the office tomorrow. Uh, so, yay, there will be much rejoicing. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, lots of good things will happen and we'll be happy about that. Um, also, um, that means that adult Bible class on Sunday morning will start next Sunday between the two services. Um, it will be in the cry room, so please join us for that. It's going to be based off of 10 men of the Bible, how God used imperfect people to change uh, the world. Um, uh, Joe will be leading that um, uh, starting next Sunday. Uh, that also means that confirmation is starting today um, in, between, uh, in between the uh, services as well, and I will be leading that, um, uh, and uh, we will be meeting down in the fellowship hall. Uh, for that. Uh, let me see here. Do I have a uh, youth group will be next Sunday, six o'clock uh, here. It's going to be kind of a cool one this Sunday. It's going to be kind of a uh, kind of meeting with with uh, other youth throughout the, the, the country uh, via um, the internet and everything. And so we are uh, excited about that. Um, so please join us for that next Sunday for the youth group. Um, I can't think, are there any other announcements? Oktoberfest, yeah, save the date. I knew I was forgetting something. October 15th is our Oktoberfest, 4 to 7 o'clock. Please come and join us. You can either eat here or you can get it to carry out and take it home uh, with you. Um, we're still working out some of the details, but, uh, but we're excited about that and can't wait for that either. I think that's everything. So uh, God's blessings on your week. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Mm -hmm.